Today we're going to look at a really nice limit that's also going to allow us to explore the failings of one of my favorite tricks to use on the channel. So let's see what this limit is. We'll calculate the limit as n goes to infinity of this infinitely nested square root object. So we have the square root of 1 over n plus the square root of 1 over n plus the square root of 1 over n, and like I said, those are all nested. Okay, so let's maybe first rewrite this in a more careful way. So let's define the following. So I'll set a sub m n equal to the square root of 1 over n plus the square root of 1 over n, where these are all nested, plus the square root of 1 over n at the end. So we've got an end in this case. And you might say, well, how many copies of 1 over n do we have? Well, we'll take m copies of 1 over n. And so that's how this thing right here is being indexed two ways. So 1 by n, which is the thing that's in the denominator, and then 1 by m, which is how many iterates of this nesting we have. So let's maybe just write down a couple of these so we have a feel for what's going on. So let's notice that a sub 1n is simply the square root of 1 over n. a sub 2n is equal to the square root of 1 over n plus the square root of 1 over n, and so on and so forth. But maybe the important takeaway here is this object right here, which is inside of our square root, and noticing that this is simply a sub 1n. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that for all values of n, so I'll put n, which is a natural number, we have a sub m plus 1 comma n is equal to the square root of 1 over n plus a sub m n. So we've got this nice recursion occurring on um, our m indexed or our first indexed sequences which are building this thing. Okay. Well, notice that under this setup here, what we have is the argument of the limit is the limit as m goes to infinity of, well, this sequence that we have. So we can rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity of the limit as m goes to infinity of a sub m comma n. And then, I'm going to make sure to put some parentheses on the inside like this because that's really what's happening here. That m limit is within the n limit. Okay, but now what we'd like to do is show that this thing that's in the blue parentheses converges for all values of n. And we're going to do that via the monotone sequence theorem. So in other words, we want to show that these are all bounded and that they either increase or decrease. And when we're talking about increasing or decreasing, we'll talk about increasing or decreasing with respect to the M index. So I think the increasing is like fairly obvious. So let's notice that we have the following. So we have A sub M plus 1 let's see, m plus 1 comma n. I'll just rewrite this as the square root of 1 over n plus the square root of 1 over n plus all the way up to the square root of 1 over n plus the square root of 1 over n. So like that. And now in total there are m plus 1 copies of n in there. But let's note that we can maybe forget about that last one and we have m copies of 1 over n in there. So now if we take this last one and we just drop it, so what if we drop this term? Well, if we drop that term, well, then we're going to get something that is smaller. I think that's pretty obvious because essentially we're just adding a positive number in there. It may be quite small because it's composed within all of the radicals and 
Well, depending on n, there's an n in the denominator, so that could also make it small, but it is positive. So if we drop that, we're gonna end up with something smaller, so that means my inequality will go in this direction. And then I'll have a sub m comma n. Okay, so what does that tell us? That tells us that our sequence a sub m n is an increasing sequence in the index m. So it's not increasing in the index n. I'll let you think about what's going on with that, but that in some ways doesn't really matter because we're looking at this m limit here, in which case the n is like a constant. Okay, so since it's increasing, and like I said before, we're trying to use the monotone sequence theorem, we probably need to show that it's bounded above because that's the pairing that we'll need for the monotone sequence theorem. Increasing needs to be paired with bounded above. Okay, so I'm gonna make the following claim and we'll prove that claim and then we'll maybe talk where this claim comes from because I'm gonna put a fairly strange, you know, above bound to this. And that is we've got for all M and N, which are natural numbers, A sub M N is less than or equal to phi, the golden ratio. So in other words, phi squared equals phi plus one. And here we're taking the positive root of this corresponding polynomial. So, I mean, there's another root which is negative, but we're taking the positive one here. Okay, so how might this go? Well, let's get off the uh, ground by first noticing that we have the following true. So a sub m n is most definitely less than or equal to a sub m comma one, and this is gonna be true for all m, which is a natural number. And why is that? Well, if we replace one over n with you know, one, we're gonna get something that's bigger because one is bigger than a half, it's bigger than a third, so on and so forth. So keeping this in mind, we actually need something a little bit simpler, and that is that a m comma one is less than or equal to phi for all values of m. Okay, so how could we do this? Well, we're gonna do this by induction. So the base case, well, that'll be the m equals one case. So in the m equals one case, we have a sub one comma n, which is less than or equal to a one comma one. I guess I put the one comma n in there just as a reminder. But that's equal to the square root of one, which is less than phi. Recall that phi is like one plus root five over two, which is definitely bigger than one. Okay, so the base case works. Now let's do the induction step. So that means we need to suppose for some value of k which is bigger than or equal to one, a sub one comma k is less than phi. And then we wanna consider the next term. So a sub one comma k plus one is equal to the square root of one plus a sub one comma k, but that's gonna be less than the square root of one plus phi. You know, given that a one k is less than phi. Oh, but one plus phi is equal to phi squared by the defining relation of the golden ratio. So this equals the square root of phi squared, which is equal to phi because phi is positive. So let's see, starting here and ending here is exactly what we need for this thing to be bounded. Well, really to finish this proof by induction. Okay, so that means that this inside limit here, the limits that's inside of these blue parentheses converges for all values of n. So it converges to a sequence depending only on n. So let's determine that. We just determined that this sequence in the blue parentheses converges for all values of n to a sequence that depends on n. And so let's set that equal to L sub n. 
So we're gonna set L sub n, like I said, equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of a m comma n. But we can scale that m index since it's going to infinity, and this will in fact be equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of a sub m plus one comma n. But now we can apply our recursion. So it's not on the board, actually it is on the board right here. So that's gonna be equal to the limit as m goes to infinity of the square root of one over n plus a sub m comma n. Okay, but now we know that this square root function is continuous. That means we can bring the limit inside and apply the limit there to bring that to L sub n. So that means here we've got the square root of one over n plus L sub n. But now note that we've got an equation, L sub n equals the square root of one over n plus L sub n. So we could perhaps solve that equation. So let's see what we get. So squaring will have L sub n squared equal, well minus maybe L sub n minus one over n equals zero after moving some things around. Now using the quadratic formula, we'll get the following. So we'll have L sub n equals one half and then one plus the square root of one plus four over n. You might say, well, don't I need a plus or a minus because of that quadratic formula? Well, in fact, I don't, and that's because we know that L sub n is positive for a couple of different reasons. First of all, it's expressed as a square root, and those are always positive. But also, notice that all of the A sub m n terms are positive, so it couldn't have a negative um, limit. Okay, so anyway, we get that value of L sub n. So that means we can bring that up here, and we have this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 half, and then 1 plus the square root of 1 plus 4 over n. But again, we can use the fact that the square root function is continuous to take this 4 over n down to 0 leaving us with half times one plus the square root of one, in other words, half times two, so we've got one. So that's our final answer for this limit, it's equal to one. So now let's look at a little danger before we finish the video. That's kind of a dangerous what if. We're gonna look at the possibility of changing the order of the limits here, because perhaps that would give us a quicker way to finding this limit. So let's see what we have. So this would give us the limit as m goes to infinity of the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub m comma n. Okay, nice. But let's look at the problem here. Just writing this out, this is gonna be the limit as m goes to infinity of the limit as n goes to infinity of the square root of one over n plus the square root of one over n plus, finally we've got our last root one over n after m of these iterations. But that's a finite number of iterations. So that gives us a continuous function. But now we can take n approaching infinity in there, and that'll take each of these to zero. But then if we take each of those to zero and add them all up, we simply get zero. So this turns in to the limit as m goes to infinity of the constant sequence zero. In other words, this is zero. And so what this really means, this doesn't add any sort of question as to maybe this could be zero, maybe this limit here could be zero. What it does is it shows that you cannot always change the order of the limits. So the way we did it at first was 
proper, we calculated this limit without changing the order of limits. If instead we had tried to use a shortcut and change the order of limits, we would have gotten the wrong value. We would have gotten this value of zero. And I just like to point out the following. This means that the double limit, which is kind of different than the iterated limit, which we have in this case, the limit as the ordered pair MN goes to, maybe this is a little bit weird to write, but the ordered pair infinity infinity of A sub MN does not exist. Because if it would exist, well, then we could define it either as the iterated limit with n first and m second, or vice versa, with m first and n second. But since we get different values for those, that means that this kind of double limit cannot exist. Okay, so you might say, well, how does this add some sort of question into one of our favorite tricks on the channel? Well, often we change the order of integration, and changing the order of integration is really just a hidden version of changing the order of limits based on the fact that an integral is defined in terms of a limit. So you might say, well, when can we change the order of a limit? Well, there are some sort of classification theorems as to when this is possible. And maybe the most famous one is the dominated convergence theorem, which we'll have a video finally about this on the channel soon. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, Subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.